Well, it is the, uh, uh it was this, this just the zero hour of the, of the 17th day. Uh, it's two minutes into the 17th day. I was going to try to make it for the 16th of May, but uh, that's not going to happen now, so we're two minutes behind. I'm doing the YouTube stroll. It's, I mean, it's our life. We just f finished a while ago at uh, Yowie Vlogs. It was an interesting day today. I had a very good time. Uh, we had our, um, see, for, for, for Eastern Christianity, Passover lasts for 50 days. I explained this on the scooter. You go take a look at the scooter vlog. I explain this further in depth from the, in, in there. <clears throat> and so we had a late uh, Pascha dinner for the family. This is when everyone could get together, and that's what we did. So it was a nice dinner, interesting conversations. Uh, I really couldn't, but I, I, I participated, but I couldn't participate that much because the conversations went into areas that I really couldn't discuss because of uh, uh, my particular issues in terms of the research that I do, which is um, not open for public discussion. And um, I said, I, 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 it's not open for public discussion, but, but most people won't sit, sit down and do the background research. When they do the background research, and this is what you find out from people as they talk about their particular things, is they're talking like Oprah, they talk about, you know, the daytime TV shows. They, they really, really don't get any uh, more in-depth than that. There is no... Uh, going to hidden sources or anything like that because they haven't done the research long enough. They don't know how to find the hidden resources. Uh, I know where the hidden resources are in many cases because I've been doing this for so long. I know that if I go down a certain path or or or, or use certain terms, that I'm bound to find the hidden path simply by the methodology that I use in terms of my searches. Uh, but the thing is, this, this methodology comes uh, from experience. I've been doing this for 30 years, and this is what I do all day long. I do this research all day long. And so what happens is that a person who's not doing the research all day long, I am a nerd, I live here, I live in my library, so this is what I eat, sleep, and breathe, because I just had dinner here. Uh, this is my research desk. Uh, uh, and it's always an, an integral part of my life. And this includes some of the TV shows I watch, and you know, and there are some very interesting TV shows that again, you sit down, and you have a conversation. The conversation has to be very limited because there are things within the TV show that most people just don't understand, and so there's no way to have a conversation. There's one where the restrictions come where there are things you can't talk about, and then there are things that, in terms of the security issue. And then there are things that people just simply don't understand. You understand it. You see it. You have a degree of understanding. Uh, older, I can talk to older people if they've had enough experience in terms of their, what they've read in life. Uh, uh, the uh, amount of reading you do and what you have read really is important. Um, older people you can talk to who have had good a good read and they've got a good background in terms of the amount of stuff they've read, their repertoire there in terms of uh, uh, their their reading experience is such that uh, they can handle more complex topics. But if a person doesn't have that, then it's, it's going to be almost impossible to have, to have a discussion, particularly when you talk about stuff that goes on in history. And what happens, even fiction has a degree of history to it. There is a history to the fiction, depending on how old it is. And this is how you can start placing and understanding and doing sort of an analysis on how people behave within history. Well, it's the psychology of history. How does history evolve? What do people think? Uh, how do they think? What were the sort of the mindsets of people as these various diff different events occurred? And you can do that uh, with uh, stuff that's historical, or even books that are old. Um, TV shows can be, can be done with, depending on how well they're done, and 
how well the various different characters are portrayed. Uh, and you can sort of begin to get a sense of of personality. And once you have the personality, and you compare it to a number of other uh, personalities, uh, you begin to piece together, and again, bits and pieces, you get to begin to piece, piece together the types of people who were involved in history and what they were thinking about. In other words, you now start getting some of the, the, the more... Uh, hidden reasons as to why someone would do what they do or what they did in terms of a historical sense. You sort of get that, it comes in, and you have now an idea. Not the whole idea, but you have enough of an, an idea to say, okay, okay, I have an understanding of that. And maybe we will say, I understand, but it's not a complete understanding. It's, it's, a, it's a partial understanding. And this is sort of the nature of how things work. This is how you begin this exploration. And as it is, in between the mundane, where I'm, I'm going to go make myself a milkshake now and then come back and uh, f uh, continue on the uh, YouTube stroll. I'm going over to the Leroy's next. They're, they're in Hawaii. My vlogs are catching up. They're, they're just about 20 days out. So, I am now within the ballpark of a vlogger. In terms of having my my work published and up, edited up and published uh, within a two week or fourteen day uh, uh, working span, so uh, I'm in that ballpark. I am in that range, and I hope to stay that way. But uh, there are always things that sort of pop up and occur, and that sort of throws the schedule off. But that's not a here nor there. That because these things do move along and. I do vlog every day. It just uh, depends on where the stuff ends up in terms of uh, the where the content belongs now, because there are uh, several vlogs coming. Well, it is uh, just about uh, fifteen, yeah, fifteen hours and thirty-two minutes into yeah, <laughs> into the seventeenth day of May. I had to check the date. I thought it was the 17th, and that's some, something popped in my mind that maybe it's not. Better check. Um, we do have the ride vlogs, but we do have this as well. And I said, well, vlog at the point where you're at, and depending on what you're doing. And right now, I'm transitioning from the gaming uh, and meditation to the ride vlog. So that's where I'm going next. Um, heading off to my parents' house. Things have gone pretty well. Uh, I'm in. I'm sort of thinking about things the way I feel right now. There are points when I used to. I used to do a lot of hiking. I used to go very, very long distances, and there were points in time on the way back near the end. Where the my body f physically was giving out, there was no more energy, and this is where you have to put yourself into to a meditative meditative state to reach in and bring out energy that you don't necessarily re you consciously don't have, and, but you do have in the subconscious. You have reserves of energy, things you can do within the subconscious that you can't do consciously. Uh, meditation helps you achieve. And, and bring out some of these things. But it puts your body and your mind into a state where you're not necessarily physically present. You're not present there. Oh, I would say, uh, uh, well, you're not aware of your physical presence. It feels, in many cases, like you're floating. You have some degree of awareness of what's around you in terms of the necessities, in terms of you're not on the road, you're not sort of uh, staggering back and forth in, in a dangerous manner. Uh, enough of that is kept uh, in your awareness. But all the things that are, are sort of unnecessary come out. They, they, they remove from your consciousness. And other things come in, the sense and feeling that the the, the, the uh, the 
only way to describe it is is basically fl floating. You know you're moving. You know you're moving forward. But the sensation of moving, the, the, the feeling within the legs in terms of the pain is gone. <clears throat> and this allows you to move forward when you typically don't have any more energy. Your, your, your body is screaming and aching. You've got to stop and, and, and you can't go any further. Well, how do you push your body further? Well, this is how. And then even though you are in pain, there is the, the, in, in terms of the actual uh, uh Well, in terms of the reality of things. The pain is dealt with in a state of awareness, in a state of meditation. And this is how I began doing the meditations uh, uh, as I am doing now. As I realized I didn't want to do uh, the Hindu and Buddhist, and as I was reading, I began to realize you could do the Christian as well. So, well, well let's do the Christian. It's a, Instead of saying "Om" is Kitty Lays. So you, as you're walking, you do the the, the the sort of the mantra is Kitty Lays. Kitty Lays. Kitty Lays. Kitty Lays. Kitty Lays. It's not about going fast. And, and, and after a certain point in time, uh, and you've done this enough, the Kitty Lays no longer becomes verbal, but rather becomes uh, something that goes on internally. And in that state, in that state of uh, so you're, where you're floating, the physical awareness in terms of the pain disappears, and this is what brings you into a floating sensation. You, you you're moving forward, regardless of the state of the environment around you. Uh, this occurs uh, and is used now for myself in. Situations where you want to move forward, but it's very difficult to move forward. And, you know, people talk, about, oh, it's, it's time, a time of confusion. Yeah, it's a lot of confusion. Because you don't necessarily know where you're going. You do, you know where you need to head to, to a certain degree. But the overall direction itself, in terms of what's immediate, immediately ahead, is not known. And so what happens is you put out of your mind and focus in your meditation the immediate issues and focus on the larger goal at hand with the Kiddiliya zone in your mind and that allows you to move forward even though you're not necessarily conscious of the, the motion forward you realize the motion forward uh, in hindsight once you've done it you get home you get Oh. to your place, place of safety, you take off your equipment, you take off your gear, and you plop down a place where you know you're going to be there for at least uh, two, three hours at a time, so you get, you get all your stuff, you get drinks or whatever you have to get, you know, in order to replenish your body. And what happens is within a half hour to an hour, the adrenaline just drops off because you've been running on pure adrenaline. And as the adrenaline drops off, the pain comes in. You feel the pain when you're relaxing. And this is sort of the nature of any form of exercise. When you're exercising, you're pushing your body to a limit. You don't feel the pain while you're exercising. You feel the pain afterwards when the body's in the relaxation mode. And it actually causes you to sleep a lot because your body is now in repair, and the state of repair that the when the where the body repairs itself is uh, when you're sleeping. So the body puts itself to sleep; it gets you into a sleep mode. That's why you have to have your your your, your what your fluids, your your uh, your replenishment of nourishment. Because what's going to happen next is your body is going to go into repair, and it needs the materials, it needs the fluids, it needs the liquids. You know the hydration. In order to do the repairs, it, these are the essential components. Without these essential components, the repairs don't always go through. And, some, and sometimes the repairs take several days. It depends on how far you've actually pushed yourself. And the body does respond to the to the, the sort of called the extreme conditioning. 
with a, a body reconstructing, with, with, with re-engineering the body, rebuilding the body, repairing the body. So you can use the extreme conditioning to do a number of repairs that you may not have thought otherwise. But it was, again, it's a, these things don't aren't absolute. You can't go and do everything. There are limitations. And you need to understand that there are limitations. You try what you can, and then what happens when you realize that there is something that's beyond what you're doing, and then that, this is where you go see and, or consult a doctor to sort of see if there's something more that needs to be done. If you feel that there's a particular problem, let's say eyesight is going or you're having problems hearing, and, you know, uh, you're having cardiac issues, you know, these are things that once you have done the basics, once you've sort of covered your, 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 your basic uh, health needs, uh, this is where you go consult a doctor. You just don't consult one doctor. You consult two or three doctors to see and, and, and compare the compare the answers as to what might be going on and what may be necessary uh, after that. Uh, and the thing is, that because different doctors have different experiences and they will have different diagnoses. And so it may not always be the same. And they may have recommendations for different, different doctors have different recommendations for different medications. Is, is one better than the other? And you don't know because people react differently. Uh, even though they do a standard testing, the standard testing is never complete because you have chemistry down to the individual. One person's chemistry is not necessarily the same as the other. So, so a drug that reacts good or well in one person's system will not react well in the second person's system. And there's no way to really sort of predict this. You can do this to a general sense, and this is what uh, drug testing is all about, is to get a general feel for the safety and the, call the, the effectiveness of the drug. Uh, the effectiveness of the drug. But you can only do it to a general degree. There is no guarantee that you're going to do this to the you know to the individual person and the thing as these patients come in, and, and, you know the, these drugs that have been out there for a long time. Why are they good? Because they've been they've been they've been well tested. You have you have and, and this, this testing is the experience. The more experience you have, the better. The new drugs are problematic because they haven't had the experience. And it's the same thing with people when they're doing the research. If you're not going to go do the deep research, you're not going to spend that time, you're not going to trudge through things. It, 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 I'm talking about the 30 years in hindsight. Going through the 30 years, doing that research, nothing, none of the time was shortened. It was all about the same. And the feeling was the same. It was lo the long distance trudge. We're near at the when you start getting near the end. It's just you feel that you're in motion, but you don't feel the motion. You feel like you're floating. Anyways, uh, time for the ride vlog, and uh, uh, I will probably see you later tonight uh, back uh, in the uh, back in the media room research desk. So uh, see you then. Well, at 22 hours and 34 minutes into the 17th day of May, uh, my ride is at an end for the day. Uh, we're back at the in the music studio. Uh, we have some gaming left to do. Uh, but another hour, 45 minutes. I think I'm going to check in on Lionel LeBron at Lionel Nation after our, our uh, rousing view of uh, the Barchester Chronicles. Uh, it, 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 one would state that Lionel LeBron, although he is of the 60s and 70s, is the one who is of the, of the Victorian era in terms of his pretense, uh, in his, his proprietary sense of, of word, the proprietary sense of diction, uh, these are the things that would be used to describe the character of Lionel LeBron and can be easily seen in Yes Minister, Yes Prime Minister, and, of course, the Barchester Chronicles. So, <laughs> it's only appropriate that we go from there to here, uh, and then tomorrow, uh, actually in a few hours, 
uh, begin the meditation cycle oh, oh, once again. It's done daily. There is a cycle that, that, that you go through. Uh, some days you complete it, other days you don't. Uh, it just really depends on what's happening during the day and uh, where your mind is at. And it, 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 the, watching characters, being the observer, is the ideal position. It's, it's, but the thing is, at the same time, you don't have, a, have an authority. You don't pick up authority because you're simply looking at things. You have a position in terms of where you are on the journey, but you don't never you don't ever you don't ever assume a t assume a particular point, stature or any such thing. You're, even though you may be at a particular point, you're not necessarily the point itself. So the authority that goes with the point of where you're at uh, is never yours. You're simply the observer. And uh, so, onward and upward with uh, uh, Lionel LeBron. <laughs>